My grandmother is Portuguese and only speaks Portuguese, so she insisted that her grandchildren called her avó, which is Portuguese for grandma. Her face is flawless, except for a few wrinkles here and there, but that's only because she's getting a little bit older. She wears these glasses that make her brown eyes 10 times bigger than they already are. She never wears makeup, but when she does, she'll apply red lipstick on her very thin lips and somehow always manages to get some on her front tooth. She wears dresses and sandals all the time and always smells like chocolate chip cookies. My vase is a little fluffy around the edges, but she's got rock solid calves from running after me, my brother, and my cousins. She doesn't even need oven mitts when handling hot pots and pans because her hands are unreceptive to heat because of the countless dinners she makes for me and my family. She also talks very loud, as do all Portuguese women, especially over the phone. She doesn't seem to understand the concept of using a telephone. She thinks that because the person is so far away, she really does have to yell so that they can hear her. <laughs> I loved hanging out with my avó as a young child. So when I was four years old and my parents, my brother Charlie and I moved into her house, I felt like the luckiest girl in the world. All throughout elementary school, my avó would wake me up for breakfast while my parents left for work. This day was my first day as an official second grader and Charlie's first day as a sixth grader. Before I even got to the kitchen, I could smell the freshly made pancakes, the sizzling bacon, and the linguiça. Linguiça is a Portuguese sausage that, I kid you not, tastes like a little bit of heaven offered on a breakfast plate. We didn't eat it that often, so I constantly craved linguiça, and Oval knew how much I loved it. I could not wait to eat it. My mouth was practically watering by the time I sat at the kitchen table. As I reached across to finally get a taste of my favorite food, I was stopped by a slap on my wrist, and the plate of linguiça was snatched out of my grasp. I looked up and saw that my avá was the one who took the plate away. I opened, up, I opened my mouth to ask why she had done that, but she beat me to it. My avá said, Isto é para teu irmão, não para ti. Faz outra coisa para comer. This is for your brother, not for you. Make yourself something else to eat. Oh, okay, Ava, I replied with a hesitant smile on my face as I walked to the pantry to grab some Frosted Flakes to make some cereal. Disappointment settled deep in my belly. I was very confused. I couldn't understand why Ava didn't allow me to eat linguiça this morning. The very first time I received my report card, I couldn't wait to get home to show my Ava my grades. My grades were sealed in an envelope, so I waited to check my grades so that we could open them together. I peered over her shoulder once she opened it, and I was so happy to see that I had received A's and B's. When I looked at Aval, she didn't seem as excited as I felt. She said, what, this is it? This is all you could do? This is all you could bring me? Aval took my grades and hid them until my mom came home. I cried and felt ashamed of myself every time I brought my report card home. I loved to dance. As soon as I learned how to walk, I danced all the time. When I was four years old, my dad introduced me to Ricky Martin's song, She Bangs and Live in La Vida Loca. <laughs> Sometimes on the weekends, I would dance around to these songs in my underwear. My brother would laugh at me, but then eventually would join in and start busting out these ridiculous dance moves, trying to imitate Ricky Martin himself. My parents would just laugh. I looked around the room for Aval to try to get her to join in on the fun. I found her next to my dad with a facial expression that meant she did not think my dancing was cute, nor funny. She turned to my dad and said, look at your daughter. She's going to grow up to be a table dancer in TJ. <laughs> I immediately stopped what I was doing. I looked at my dad's face and saw that the smile that was on his face before was no longer there. At the time, I had heard what Ava had told my dad, but I didn't understand what a table dancer was, but I guessed it was not a compliment. I ran to my room to put some pants on, and I promised myself that I would never dance in front of my Ava ever again. Every time I threw a tantrum, or I didn't follow directions, or if I made a mistake, my Ava would get so mad at me, and she would say, I'm going to return you to the 99 cent store and find me a better granddaughter. My Ava and I walked to my elementary school every day, hand in hand, hand in controlling hand. Andrea, my Ava whispered. I looked up at her, and my Ava looked down at me with a serious, almost dark expression on her face. She said, did you know that your dad never even wanted you? Before you were born, your dad told me that he wanted another boy, not you. I think you're old enough to know this. 
I thought that this couldn't be true, but I didn't understand why Ava would lie to me. She had no reason to lie. Grandmothers weren't liars. On Monday nights, my mom's side of the family would come over for dinner. My Ava always weighed, made way too much food. During the summer, we would all eat outside, and all of my aunts and uncles and cousins would play volleyball, or we would try to play double dutch by tying ju two jump ropes together. When my cousins came through the door, my Ava would greet them with a big smile on her face and a huge heartwarming hug. As I watched their interaction, I tried to recall the last time Ava had given me a hug or even just a smile. I suppose she held me when I was a baby, but other than that, I had no recollection of a time when Ava showed any sort of affection towards me. Why were my cousins on the receiving ends of her hugs and kisses and not me? What had I done wrong? As my Aval got older, she started acting differently, and she began to rely on me for companionship. When I was 15, she would occasionally call me into her bedroom, claiming that she needed to show me something. But I knew there was nothing that she wanted to show me. Her bedroom was always very dark. There were a few fake candles around, but she never turned on her light, nor did she ever open the blinds. I walked inside and sat on her bed and got comfortable because I knew I would be here for a while. The moment she turned towards me after closing her door, her facade would drop and her tears would start tumbling down. My Ava would tell me things like, my grandchildren don't want to spend time with me and my own children don't want to talk to me and I do everything for my kids and yet they treat me like shit and I don't have, any, I don't have enough money to pay the bills and I just want to die because nobody loves me. At first, I started to feel sorry for her because nobody seemed to want to spend time with her. But then, as I sat there and listened to her, I started to feel angry and annoyed. Why is she telling me all of this? I thought to myself. Aval looked at me with this expression that seemed to say that she wanted something from me. Maybe she wanted affection, compassion, sympathy, or even acceptance, but how was I supposed to give her something that she had never even given me? When I was 16, I developed, I developed anxiety. I had just made captain of my high school's color guard. We're the ones spinning flags and holding these boards that have letters that spell out the name of the high school, and we make the band look pretty. I was feeling the pressures of being the captain. I wanted my team to do great at our competitions, and if we didn't do all that great, I blamed myself, thinking I was an inadequate captain. Because of this mindset, after my team and I would finish a performance, I would experience anxiety attacks. My palms would start sweating, and my legs would go numb. My lips would turn blue because I could not breathe. I felt like I wanted to come out of my body. I'd try my hardest to hold it all in. I'd clench my fists and I'd try to dig my fingernails into my skin so that I could focus on that pain instead. But eventually, I'd start crying and screaming and hyperventilating. I went from only getting anxiety attacks after performances to getting them at school during class and at home as many as three times in one day for a month. My parents decided I, need to see it. I needed to see a therapist. When I saw the building where my sessions would take place, I was a little creeped out because it reminded me of an old haunted motel. My therapist was a woman and she was very patient with me, which I was grateful for because it took me a while to open up. She asked me questions about school, color guard, and my family. When I told her I lived with my grandma, she asked what that was like and I told her everything I had ever said and done to me. Then she asked me the typical question all therapists ask, and how does that make you feel? while pointing to the how are you feeling today chart that had been mocking me the entire session. I said, well, I was told that I shouldn't feel sad because there are other people who have it, who have it worse than I do. So my therapist cut me off and said, I didn't ask you how other people feel. I asked how she made you feel. I hesitated before I answered. She makes me feel ugly because she told me I was fat and that pretty girls are skinny. She makes me feel stupid because my grades aren't worth her praise. She makes me feel so small, and I feel so worthless. All I want is her approval, but I don't think I'm ever going to get it. Now, I am 18 years old, and I still live with Laval. Recently, I showed interest in changing my major to creative writing. When Laval found out, she, once again, called me to her room. I show you something, she said. I rolled my eyes and followed her to her room. I stood by her door with my arms crossed and waited for her to say something. I heard you wanted to do something with writing, she said. Yeah, maybe, I said. Ava stared deep into my eyes and replied, don't you want to become someone of importance? Why don't you become a doctor like your brother or a nurse like your cousin 
or go into the Navy like, stop it, I yelled at her. Unfazed, Abal continued on, I'm only trying to help you. If you were my daughter, well, I'm not your daughter, I interrupted. And I don't need your help, not anymore. <laughs> 